That's right, it's the big show where we talk movies, and we decided to wear our TV shirts tonight. Hello, cult members. Welcome to the Pop Culture Cult. This is Sean. I'm Janice. It's close enough. <laughs> We're a hot mess tonight. <laughs> and welcome to the big show. Like I said, uh, I will edit out that mistake. More not. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Wait, which one? Uh, that, yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, if you watch this show, we are professional all the time. Professional as fuck. As fuck. We're not supposed to be swearing. Oh, Grandkids sorry. watch, remember? What the fuck is wrong with you? Uh, earmuffs. <laughs> Spoilers, we curse on this show. Uh, it, we want to welcome you guys in. We have one major topic that we're going to talk about tonight because we I read Janice the article and then we spent an hour talking about it and we're not done talking about it. <laughs> uh, and so it's going to be the Bob Iger stuff. But there's a lot of other stuff that's going on. A lot of like small stories kind of like whatever kind of yeah. thing yep. um and then a couple of trailers came out in the last few days um one was quite marvelous quite marvelous yes hmm okay like kind of captain e oh okay right captain e marvelous marvelous um, um we also saw a movie last week on wednesday we did <laughs> I didn't put that in there. I don't remember what we saw now. What uh, did we see? The, um, the simple oh, favor. Oh, a simple favor. Jesus Christ, we have to read through. All right, we'll be back in five minutes. I have to redo all the notes. <laughs> just throw it in there. Okay, I'll throw it in there. Um, we're going to start off with some news. I just actually, I, I don't know if it's breaking or if I just happened to come across it. Uh, Gary Kurtz. Um, the producer for A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back uh, died yesterday at 78. Um, he was the guy who Lucas went to to get stuff done. Mm -hmm. If they needed to spend more money on ILM or or whatever, right. or to get right. you know, we got to get um, an editing machine to Tanzania so they could edit on sets, right. <laughs> and they bring a giant um, model. Um, uh, elephant model skeleton. Oh yeah! And they put it on the plane and they throw it in the desert. That's yeah. why there's that giant like uh, snake uh, worm in the in the desert yeah. in the New Hope. Yep. Um, yeah. He was um, originally the f um, worked with Lucas on uh, uh, American Graffiti and helped oh, okay. him get American Graffiti made okay. and all that stuff, and then uh, helped him get New Hope done. With yep. the, they did that movie for eleven million dollars. Yeah. In 1977, which yeah. was a lot of money in 1977, but if you yeah. think about it, it's still like for what it made and everything. But it was a ton of practical stuff. I mean, for they were inventing the, the wheel, <laughs> right? For the creation of ILM being birthed out of that, there yeah. was still a ton of practical. I mean, when you look at all those star cruisers and stuff, and realize oh, they yeah. were models that were like this big, you yeah, know. and they are, they. They filmed the trench scene outside because they built the model for the trench scene and it wasn't big enough to fit in the building. And so <laughs> they had to take it outside and film it. Like, yeah, it was, what they're doing. Yeah. I, I actually, it, they need to do an ILM. I'm sure there's an ILM documentary, but whatever. Um, he also helped produce uh, The Dark Crystal, mm -hmm. which was a great movie in the early 80s. And they also did Return to Oz. Um, I just It just happened to pop up when I was checking Facebook one last time before we came on. So yeah. that's sad. It is. Um, a lot of that group is going to start, it's going to start yeah, going it's, away. Yeah, it's, it's going getting to be kind that of, time. Yeah. Um, sad, but we're going to move on and let it um, kind of talk about more fun stuff. So it ca so we had this whole Bond thing that's been going on for a while. I know. Right? <laughs> so we have Bond 25 coming on. And a bunch of different people have been attached to it and not attached to it and yeah. whatever. Yeah. Uh, Idris Alba for Bond. But <laughs> Can I get shirts? Uh, Danny Boyle was going to write and direct it. And everybody was like, that's a really weird pick. Yeah. Because it's not a typical 
Bond, Bond pick, yeah. and it's not a typical Danny Boyle kind of movie. Right. But he was really interested. Uh, Daniel Craig was going to come in one last time. Yep. Hopefully not phone it in this time. Hopefully not phone it in too much this time. And then Danny Boyle decided that um, what the Broccoli's wanted to do didn't match what he wanted to do, and right. he stepped away. Right. Which is kind of interesting because anybody who knows anything about the 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 Bond franchise and the broccoli yeah. family specifically they are very much you are doing it this way or right or hit the road right so, so. it came out last week that um out of, of completely left field from danny boyle uh the broccolis and the bond franchise have picked carrie fukunama fukunaga fukunaga I tried. I, I read it like seven times, and I still can't do it. Uh, reading is not fundamental for me. Um, he was the who did the first season of True Detective. Yep. Uh, he was the showrunner for that. He did uh, Jane Eyre and Beast of No Nation, and he also wrote and directed uh, and was the showrunner for Maniac, which right. we're about halfway through right now. Yep. And I'm going to tell you right now, it might be my favorite show this year. Yeah, it's... We'll see where it goes. We'll see where it goes. Yeah. Um, but a um, they announced an American director. Yeah. To direct a Bond movie. Well, with a last name like Fukunaga. He, is... and, yeah, and he's Korean American. He was born in Oakland, so okay, all right. Uh, and born and raised in Oakland, okay. and got into film well, and stuff. Broadening their horizons a little bit, then we still need Idris Elba as Bond or Henry Cavill. Can we get Henry Cavill or Idris Elba on? <laughs> Am I asking for two? Because he's not going to be Superman anymore because the DC doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. True. We'll get into that in a minute. Holy cow. <laughs> True. Um, they also announced that filming will begin at Pinewood Studios in London on March 4th with the movie coming out on February 14th, 2020. So less than a year. So less than a year. That means... That means they have a script almost ready to go. And they're just, at this point in time, they're working on pre-production stuff and everything at Pinewood. Well, they might have had the script already with Danny. And now that it's not going to be him, they bring this guy in, they, they do with... some tweaks. Yeah, yeah. And and then go. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm interested in... I'm interested in how this is all going to turn out because this is a departure from for the Broccoli's having somebody from outside Britain do it. As we're kind of joking about Henry Cavill maybe possibly being Bond um, and Wet Dreams, I think we'd all love to see that. But <laughs> it it shows that the Broccoli's maybe are willing to let go a little bit of stuff and have somebody kind of on the outside come in. Yeah, I mean, it's just not necessarily working anymore right they um the last couple have been skyfall you know, was really good uh, yeah but they've but that was a homage all had kind of mediocre critical acclaim um box office acclaim whatever i mean not not like in their heyday like in the yeah the, the, the late 80s and early 90s when they were Pretty right. big. Well, and but then... they were also super campy then too with uh, Pierce Bronson. Is that the? Yeah, I don't know that I would say they were campy, but and then you know the Sean Connery, um, all that. Yeah. It's just uh, you need to kind of change with the times. I get holding on to you know what made it, what right. makes it Bond right. or whatever, but you know you gotta you gotta move on. They too. did make um they did make this Daniel Craig run a lot more dark and gritty mm -hmm. and emotional and yeah with and that, the, him his attachment to the girl yeah yeah and, uh, oh, and, and his like you know he's kind of a brooding asshole not the charming asshole which is very different that we've had in the bond in the past he's kind of the brooding asshole yeah. kind of thing so yeah. i'm super excited i really love the bond franchise and i would love to see uh someone's a, a different take on it that yeah it, yeah it, it's it's Bond. It, you're allowed to just go forward and, and do different things and stuff like that. Well, they need to allow people yeah. to go forward. Yeah. <laughs> um, we did a trailer reaction on Tuesday for Captain Marvel. I did. Yeah. Um, it looks awesome. It does. 
Shut up, internet. It looks awesome. It looks awesome. Um, her reaction to everybody saying that she's not smiling in the, in the trailer <laughs> has been awesome. She went in and they photoshopped smiles on all on the all, all the them. superheroes <laughs> from all the Avengers and stuff. <laughs> so everybody's pretty like, awesome. Uh, it it's been talked about. It's been a week, so it's been talked about a ton. Uh, I will tag it to the end of this uh, episode and let you know, like, let, so you can watch it and yep. stuff. Uh, today they released uh, the first official trailer, not the Comic Con trailer, not the teaser trailer, but the right. first official trailer of Bumblebee. And I did a trailer reaction for that this afternoon. Uh, Haley Steinfeld is going to be the main human, uh, <laughs> and Travis Knight is the director. And yep. I'm pretty excited from what I saw in this. Yeah, I'm cautiously optimistic. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure we'll go see it, um, but like spoilers for the trailer reaction like you said um you know we've been burned before right and so but right. i really love bumblebee i mean out of all of them i know you're an optimus prime guy but I am, and i, I was i'm a girl so i wasn't necessarily into them although the boy you know i did raise three boys and so i was <laughs> exposed to them as a cartoon but just bumblebee that he he's the one character who's always been able to kind of invoke some emotion in those movies you know yeah all like, even though he can't Aw. talk and yeah stuff, he's, he's like always, he's got the you he's know. got the face and the Aw. emotions and all yeah. that kind of stuff and using the radio to talk yeah and stuff like that yeah, yeah. you just feel sorry for him and... i i really like the last trailer when they rick rolled everybody at the end <laughs> that was funny that was fun but this one it was uh i, I talked about in the trailer reaction i, I I'm, I'm hesitant because Bay's kind of screwed us a little bit, yeah. but I'll tag that one on to this in here too, so you can watch both of those. I did have a bit of a hard time watching it too, and not comparing it to the it, Michael Bay stuff. It, it's it it's it's a, it's familiar enough to the Bay that makes you question it a little bit, but like the way they transform is different. Yeah, the way although the, the sounds were the same. The, the sound, transforming yeah, sound. Yeah, the sound was same. The, and and but this just they just. It feels like it's made for a little bit younger, younger audience, and I'm wondering if that's okay or not. So I guess we'll, I guess we'll find out. Yeah. Uh, uh, yesterday we did our new show called TV Time. Uh, it TV is time. Uh, just about TV stuff, and so we do about 20, 25 minutes every episode, and we do a pick of the, uh, the a pick of the week. It's not that show. <laughs> uh, we do the pop choice, <laughs> pop choice of the week. And we do reviews and we do some news and notes and stuff like that. We talked about the Emmys for like three seconds, but most of it was about the streaming service that's coming from Marvel, part of the Disney stuff. And, yep. Um, uh, I, I will add it to the lineup. There's a, there's a little dot up here. I figured out all <laughs> new things how to play in YouTube. Uh, oh, up God. Here. Uh, I'll tag it to there. <laughs> Let's talk about the simple favor before we get into the Bob Iger stuff. Okay. So we went uh, – this – came started coming out you know the advertising for it and stuff came out yep. we're like eh, whatever and uh with uh i'm gonna have to look it up aren't i with anna kendrick and uh talk amongst yourself for a second <laughs> while i look this up because i totally forgot that we did this all right there we go anna kendrick and blake lively and we were like, ah, whatever, you know. Yeah, and you're kind of like, is it a rom com? Just from the lineup, you're like, is it some kind of rom com? And Anna Kendrick, right? Right. And then you started. We started seeing some um, trailers for it in front of some other movies, and then it kind of seemed more like um, a murder mystery. Yeah, or... Gone Girl. Yeah. Or yeah. you know, yeah, that kind of thing. And what we saw is not at all. <laughs> <laughs> no that movie was gonna be. No. It was awesome, but yeah, it's it's very different than what I thought it was going to be, and that's one hundred percent okay. Yeah, I like. Yeah. Uh, we, like I said, we didn't watch a lot of the trailers other than we went when we saw them at whatever movie we were yeah. at. And it wasn't something that was on our radar. Yeah. But after its opening weekend and it opened so well and the yeah. word of mouth on this movie was so good, we're like, we're like oh. well, we got we need to go. And we had a lull, so we're we like, had, all right, we'll yeah, go see let's it. Go through it. Um, I really thought Anna Anna Kendrick was awesome. She played a toned down version of her normal character. I, I, I don't know how to other. She's yeah. 
she's very bubbly and very personable and willing to help and do all this stuff and yeah. she's very funny but she's also like dealing with stuff and she's also um looking for friends and yeah. and so there's that that kind of dark humor to her a lot and Blake Lively I, I I'm I'm struggling with like not liking the stuff that she's in like every time we've seen something, I've been like, I really like her, and the like, internet tells me she she's not supposed to be liked. Why does the internet tell you I, she's not I, supposed to be liked? Because she's not very good as an actress, and I I don't see it, guys. I'm sorry. I think she's been awesome. Yeah. I, okay. Whatever. I mean, I remember her from you know like Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants when when yeah. our daughter she was, was younger. She was and, awesome in uh, Savages. In the, Savages, the, yeah. The, uh, Oliver Stone movie. Yeah, yeah. We really love that movie. Yep. Actually, we own it. Yep. Uh, one, but overall, I it's not what you expect. We're trying not to spoil it. Is what we're right. trying to get around here. Uh, it's not what you expect. It's a little bit of everything. It's a little bit of everything. There's a twist and a twist and then a twist. And then a twist. Yeah. Um, and, and none of the twists, um, you, most of them you don't see coming. Right. The first one you might see coming just because you kind of know maybe there's something, but then there's another one, another one. Yeah. And, and it's, it's a little like every once in a while it starts to kind of maybe get a little silly. And then for the most part, it rains itself back. It there was walks up to the line, kind of does the like a uh, <laughs> catwalk, you know, like on the top. <laughs> Uh, the high wire thing and then cuts back on yeah scott mance said i think it was scott mance said um uh, he really liked it he wasn't a big fan of the ending thought it just then it did actually kind of go over the silly um Uh, line a little bit but I, i just thought it was a lot of fun and the movie theater for a wednesday after it had already been out for Almost two weeks was almost yeah. full. Yeah, it was good. It was a good good attendance yeah. for it. So, yeah. uh, overall, your score, um, three point two five. That's where I was at. Okay. So, yeah, this is where you come for hitting information. Like, we both liked it, and we're not going to tell you spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> Probably won't buy it, but definitely would watch it if it came on Netflix or something. Yes. Yes, that is a that was a good point. I was I always try to add that in. If it's on Netflix, we'll, we'll watch it or yeah, absolutely. or whatever streaming service we own at the time. Uh, but yeah, it's it's definitely definitely worth watching and supporting movies like that and searching and yeah. that kind of stuff is kind of. Was it an A twenty four movie? I don't. I honestly don't remember. No, I it was. We, um, it wasn't H Brothers. No, it was um, Lionsgate. Lionsgate. Yeah, Lionsgate because movie. we had a yeah. couple of Lionsgate previews. Yeah. Before and I was like, oh, is this? I a don't Lionsgate remember going movie? to it until you said something. So, <laughs> it was so memorable. Uh, it was it was super memorable. I just there's been some shit that's happened since then, and <laughs> my, I had to delete something. <laughs> All right, Sherlock. All right. Uh, so we're gonna get into the Bob Iger interview that he did with THR's uh, Matthew Belloni. 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 Uh, this has been the topic of conversation for a lot of places since it came out mid last week. And uh, there's a lot of different things in this article talking about the streaming service and the firing of Rosanna James Gunn and the changes that's happened at Pixar and ESPN over the last few months and the change of culture, both those places. Um, What's going to happen with the Fox stuff? A lot of it it stems from the streaming service and what's going to happen with that and why they are making decisions that they are and why they're kind of still being sh- kind of hush hush on a lot of stuff. This is the first time I actually really heard them actually talk about what they're thinking at right. least from a business point of view. Well, it was interesting because we talked about this on, was it TV time? We just talked about this or yeah. was it on the last big show? And um, I think I mentioned that they have a, a huge catalog. So, Unlike Netflix, where Netflix had to kind of hurry up and throw a bunch of stuff out there to fill right, up their catalog, right. um, Disney doesn't have to do that because they've got Disney and Pixar and Fox and and Star Wars and Marvel, yeah, and they've yeah. got a bunch of stuff already, so then they can throw some... Yeah, we were having the conversation about they were spending like $10 million an episode or whatever on, on the... the Star the Wars show and the Loki, Loki Scarlet and, Witch yeah, stuff. Yeah. And, yeah, and so they can do that because they can do some 
lesser, higher quality stuff because they've got enough content. And that's what our egg, um, that's what I, Bob Iger was saying in this interview is um, they looked at the model that Netflix has and they really appreciate what Netflix is doing, but they also look at Netflix and say they're doing they're doing qual quantity 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 yeah. and if something happens to be good yeah it's a bonus it's throwing a bunch of stuff at the wall and seeing what's right stays. and we've talked we kind of made that joke yeah in the past yeah. but it's it's true that's kind of what they've been doing um but then bob Iger wants to do maybe not as much stuff but make sure it's all really good yeah and and, and they're in a unique position where they can do that because they've got all this stuff already and that's so. and then he also talked about that and he was also saying that you know, we come into this at from a different point than what Netflix does because we have yeah. Disney and Pixar and FX and and, and Marvel and blah, 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 blah. Yep. so we have a catalog already. Uh, the discussion about the Fox buyout too allows them to take their time having all that extra stuff to throw in now. Yeah, and I wasn't even until he read me the article i wasn't even thinking about fx um and uh, i really wasn't even thinking about pixar yeah. you know i was specifically yeah. thinking star wars marvel disney yeah and uh you forget they got all that other stuff too yeah they own what the what the fox merger buyout they'll own 40 percent of the market in, yeah in theaters in theaters um, they'll own forty percent of the, the the films that came out this year. So, but you have to think about just Disney itself, because eh, Star Wars has been around, you know, what thirty years? Um, forty. Marvel, shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, forty. Um, <laughs> uh, Marvel's new. Pixar's pretty new, um, but Disney itself. I mean, has been around for 60, like 70, 70 years. years. Yeah. Like that, so, yeah. I mean, I don't know how many people are clamoring for Steamboat Willie cartoons, but I mean, they've got, <laughs> they've got would, a lot of stuff out there. I would think it'd be like a cool teaching point to have it out there, but that's, that's just me. Oh, I'd watch it. <laughs> um, I would watch it too, because just what they did was amazing. Um, some of the other stuff that they talked about in this article, in this interview, uh, he talked about the firing of Roseanne and and James Gunn yep. and in in talking about Roseanne specifically he made a point of saying that they they as a group unanimously decided to fire Roseanne after what happened yes and then he made a point of saying the studio came to me with a unanimous decision and I backed it about For James, James Gunn. Gunn yeah now we talked about this after after I read the article tour and we had some discussions and stuff like that. And I and I I'm struggling with that decision. I've struggled with the James Gunn decision the whole way. Like yeah. It, we've we've talked about it in the past. Uh, it had already been addressed. Some douchebag gets on Twitter and his whole job is just to get people fired. And then oh by the way he comes out that he has you know skeletons in his closet. Right. Um, but but. Um, it 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 came out it came across as a um if the James Gunn stuff had come out first and they hadn't reacted as quickly as they had with Roseanne, then maybe he would have kept his job. But since they had since they had already set the precedence with what happened with Roseanne, they almost had to go with the James Gunn stuff. Yeah. And that's kinda what I felt like he was trying to say without like well, really kind of saying it's, that. It, what he said goes against what we have heard now you know i mean this is the guy right. so and everything else we've heard has been rumor i guess but you know what we heard was that um uh even kevin feige went to bob Iger and said bring james gunn back yeah and he said no and and then bob Iger kind of in this article made it sound more like the studio was behind it and he was just saying yeah okay what whatever you want and that kind of goes against what we've it's heard kind of goes against what we heard i've also heard that the the guy like uh Iger's second command and i cannot remember his name i want to say alan walker and i don't think that's right um 
he was the main one pushing to get James Gunn fired. Yeah. And 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 Bob pretty much had to, had to like, I'm going with my guy in this. Yeah. The, the kind of thing. I I just I'm I'm glad he I'm glad he addressed it the way he did. Uh, I it, this article throughout the whole thing. There is a level of transparency that I really appreciate here, but there's also a level of they didn't quite go as far as I wanted him to go with discussing certain yeah, things. Yeah, I wouldn't I, say there was... I mean, uh, uh, so, I mean, I work in a corporate atmosphere and have for quite a long time, and and you don't. Right. And so a lot of what he said was very familiar. It's, it's stuff that... Corporate speak. Corporate, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. where the... You know, it was my decision to do the the Star Wars thing, right? Um, which I'm sure you'll talk about. Oh, but yeah. he said, you know, yeah, it was my decision to do all this. Well, you know, you're you're the guy making a billion dollars a year, so yeah, you you, you have to say that. Right. But it really probably wasn't. Really probably wasn't the Star Wars thing. We'll get back to the Marvel thing in a second. But the the Star Wars thing that he said is, I made it a timing decision, discussing that there maybe they. They rush rushed solo, too much, yeah, and they or they rush some stuff, um, and that there's going to be a break coming in the Star Wars movies, and and he said, um, uh, I'm trying to get it so I can read it the right way here, guys. So the, this is what happens when you're doing live to tape. Uh, he talks about um, I made the timing decision, and as I look back, I think it was a mistake that I made, and I'm totally to blame. Uh, was a little too much, too fast. We can expect some slowdown, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to make films. J.J. is busy doing nine, and we have creative entities, including Benioff and Weiss, who are developing sagas of their own, which we um, have, which we haven't specifically, uh, haven't been specifically specific specific about. about. Sorry, um, I'm trying to read ahead as I'm reading it. It's not working. Uh, we're at the point now where we're going to start making decisions on what's going to happen after J.J.'s nine. But we think we're going to take uh, be a little more careful about the volume and the timing. The buck stops here on that decision, and, and this is that transparency thing that I kind of appreciate. The rumor has always been that it was Disney that told Lucasfilm, "You have to put out Solo in May." Right. You have to. Right. And even with all the issues that happened, and them changing the directors, and Ron Howard having to come in and taking the break and doing all this stuff, they asked Lucas went to Disney and said, "We'd like to move it to December." You own December, right? Lucasfilm, Disney, let the, let, but they have Mary Poppins coming out this year, right. and they're putting all their time and money in that. And so the the rumor has always been that Iger and whoever else at the upper level said, "No, it has to be May," right? And that forced it to maybe not be as good as it needed to be, and give it time away from Last Jedi. Yeah, which I was I think, think the, the bigger big thing. thing. Yeah, and Bob Iger admits here that that was a poor decision. Right, and so what I appreciate because again, it's it's kind of a lot of corporate double speak, but I do appreciate you know um, holding them up against Warner Brothers, where we have said you know one one face what, one whatever somebody come out and say something that, at yeah. least bob Iger is willing to come out and say we made a mistake i i made a mistake because right. the buck stops with me but we made a mistake and we're going to course correct whereas nobody from warner brothers comes out and says anything and they just keep they just keep throwing, throwing stuff, stuff and, yeah. and not yeah and so they've kind of lost um uh faith from the fan base right right that was one of the things a lot of people um took this quote as uh the opposite of what i'm taking it as a lot of people were like oh my god they're not gonna make any star wars movies there was that kind of conversation and but there was also the um the 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 discussion of taking the blame like he like is just taking the blame to take the blame and i kind of took it as this is them recognizing they made a mistake and that the world right to work again on what it. do you want them to do right. internet you know you're not happy when they do one thing and you're not happy when they do the other right you're not happy when they're warner brothers and nobody ever comes out and says we made a mistake by forcing justice league and bvs to be less than two hours nobody said anything so everybody complains about that but then when disney comes out and says we made a mistake with star wars and you know here's the road with Marvel and here's and 
nobody likes that. So right. which is it right. that you which want? Is it? Right. I, I just I this was this is the one specifically this this one and we'll get into the Marvel thing in a second, but the, this is the one specifically where I was like, Yeah, we screwed up. We shouldn't have done it that way. Maybe yeah. we should have given up time. I know it's corporate double speak, but there's corporate double speak and then there's coming out and saying, you know, we in the future we could have been, handled things in a much better thing. No, he's like, No, the buck stopped here. I screwed up. Yeah. And he said, I screwed up, not we screwed up right. or whatever. I right. screwed up. Right. And that I appreciate it. Yep. And, and that gives me faith in Kathleen Kennedy. It gives me more faith in Kathleen Kennedy and the decisions that are being made. Outside of the story group and all that stuff. And that's a, that's a different conversation. But them taking, like, they, there was kind of a push to get to two Star Wars movies a year. Yeah. And as much as I love Star Wars... There's enough content outside of the movies yeah. that I am satisfied with. Yeah. And again, with the streaming service, you know, they can continue to put out all right. this other stuff and not not have it be a movie and take their time with the movies and take the money with the movies. And, and the books have been all the books have been really good and the yeah. we got you know, Rebels yep. was really good and all that kind of stuff. And now the the last thing we're gonna talk about with the Bob Iger stuff is the discussion of the f- x-men franchise coming into marvel right. and they kind of touched on a, a little bit not like super deep no but i thought what did. he said was pretty insightful yeah and pretty definitive he came out and said kevin fight he's gonna run all of it yep um so there's been not we're gonna look at the staff at Fox and right. I mean he did say he that, did but say that but not, not about th- leading it but that kevin feige was the guy right and and the there was a lot of talk that after Phase 3 got done and we had 10 years worth of movies that Fahey would probably want to walk away yeah. or go to something, you know, do something else or get a promotion or whatever like that. Yeah. And he specifically said there's one Marvel. There's not two Marvels. There's yeah. one Marvel. Yeah. And if there's one Marvel, Kevin Feige's in charge of it. Right. And... That's a big deal to me yeah. because Kevin Feige is also going to run these these shows that are going to be on the streaming service. He's going right. to be the overall grand poobah of yeah. the show. Yeah, but the I feel show. like he's maybe, uh, you know, there's people with all the Star Wars stuff that were like, you know, Catherine, K- Kathleen Kennedy needs to take some lessons from um, Kevin Feige. And we don't know, maybe she wasn't given this opportunity, but... He doesn't micromanage, right? He right, it's his, right. He, he's very broad in his overseeing of everything, right. and then they have these directors to come in and he, he he comes in and says, "You have to get to this point. How you get to that point is up right, to you. But right. this is the point we need you, or we need you to to touch on this point and this point, right? And however you get to that point, those points, everything else is fine. Like, yeah, just do your thing and." Do a spy movie, do a heist movie, right. do a buddy cop movie, do you know all that kind of stuff? Right. So I yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yep. And so it was. Um, the other kind of kind of a joke was uh, so Deadpool's gonna be an Avenger, <laughs> was what uh, Matthew uh, Belloni was asking, and Iger says Kevin has ideas. <laughs> Thank you for nothing. So. We talked about this for a minute, and and this has been the main kind of discussion with the Fox buyout by Disney is what happens with the rated R, the more adult, the darker in, the FX series, all that kind of stuff. Are these going to show up on the streaming service? Are we going to do a sectioned off, you know, this is the kid version of Disney. The rumor is Disney Play. Is what the name of it, but I'm not going with that. Cause with the a, streaming service? Yeah, because that's a terrible name. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, they're kind of running out of right euphemisms. <laughs> I like Disney on the go, but that's yeah, just me. I but. think, well, Fox on the I don't know. I think on the go has been used a yeah, bunch, yeah. too. But um, they can do like, you know, Netflix has the, we were talking about this, Netflix has the different... Um, who's watching right right and right. you can section we we have a section for the grandkids and it's it's a children's you set it up as a a kid um watcher and it filters through all and puts right, all the right, kid right. content in there 
they have i just read something that they were bolstering their um uh child uh, what do they call it like protection you know kind of like like their their parental um locks (laughs) yeah yeah um i just what i what i had always envisioned is that they're going to have fox be like a standalone uh a, a standalone entity within the Disney umbrella like just like Pixar just like Marvel and whatever have yeah, Fox but then have you their can't stand- get any crossover stuff well no but Fox as a studio could do the more adult stuff yeah this- it's still there's still the problem of you know Marvel has always been PG-13 is probably the hardest rating they've right, gotten right so you can't bring in daredevil or uh, deadpool um you know x-men kind of set a precedence with logan so do you do more of that stuff on the fox side and not bring the x-men into the they avengers made stuff? a point of doing venom as a pg-13 so it can be in- inserted into the mcu if that actually is possible yeah, and so like that kind of conversation, I find I find it a little interesting. Like the the Sony conversation with Marvel is a completely different entity. They are working together on the Spider Verse stuff. Yeah, and so they are a joint thing within the Spider thing, uh, and so that part I, I I I get that conversation. You can't make one point four billion dollars in two Deadpool movies. And turn around yeah. and say, okay, we're going to do them totally different now. Just, yeah, no, that there's, doesn't there's work. There's a marketplace for that, just right. as there's a marketplace for bed knob and brood six. Right. I, and, you know, so I, I just want both. I'm not super concerned because Disney has shown that they are willing to do more adult stuff. The Disney XD channel is pretty, has some you know it's cartoons and they're not Rose was dark at the end Rose yeah was really i mean they're not the r-rated or anything but they're definitely for a, a more a more teen kind of um watcher and so they're not afraid of it it's just it's it's all a branding thing right how right. are they gonna i just a, a, a light bulb just went off in my head yeah Ooh, oh was that what that sound that's was? what that sound was and maybe the smell <laughs> see the smoke uh they also announced that they're going to sell alcohol at star wars land and there's, that's very different. That's um, yeah. Walt Disney didn't want alcohol in Disneyland at all. Right. Well, that was a that's proof that they're willing to right all in this most sacred of lands within the Disney umbrella, right. Disneyland itself. They're going to sell alcohol. Now you've already so that kind of shows that they're willing to have the adult stuff with Move the kids stuff. With the stuff it's like just that. yeah, it's going to yeah. be a branding thing, right? Because you can't if it's Marvel we have expected Marvel to be like this. So then is it like Marvel after dark <laughs> Marvel XD? <laughs> I would love to see Marvel, Marvel after extreme. Dark. It, there, there's the Batman. Uh, there's the black label series black, is coming out yeah. in, in the DC universe for the comics right now. And they are specifically written for adults because they just showed Bruce Wayne's dick on and the, <laughs> like the third. And everybody went crazy and they didn't really show it. It was him <sighs> naked and you could see shadows and his hips. I mean, it wasn't like it was, but if they did that kind of thing, I'm kind of not that I want to see Batman's dick, but, <laughs> but like, but th- that adult kind of theme is kind of cool. So I, the, I felt that an article was very cool into something that we, they call the Joseph Scrimshaw from four center calls um the bob Iger uh board um, uh, shareholders phone calls as Iger cons because he's always the one who breaks all the information about what's coming in the star wars universe and the marvel universe and stuff like that and then the internet goes crazy with it and then disney marketing has to come and go well, really what he meant was you know and so having him like sit down and have this conversation yeah it was some corporates talking there but i thought i just thought it was kind of a cool article broad scope in a very short article uh, quote again unquote, it's short article. better than warner brothers and their and, and that that's, nothing and that's exactly what i was going to say this is showing even if with the corporate kind of discussion there's at least a level of transparency there unlike warner brothers and dc unlike uh um some of the other studios millennium with them hiring brian singer and like th- that kind of stuff 
like they're trying to hide from it in in today's world you can't not hide from it anymore yeah yeah so it's better to get in front of it even if it's just corporate blah blah speak because the internet's gonna just make they're up gonna make their, up their own, own story yeah. and talk about it all over We're the place gonna, as much as we try to be positive and joyful and have fun because this is released from all the you know whatever bowl um and we try to be is we, we we're responsible in our speculation you know, and what we think it's going to be. We're still going to do it. We're still going to get on here and, and we're going to talk about Harlequin next and what what the hell they're doing there. <laughs> and, and so even us. But it's our are, opinion. We're not. We're, uh, but our <laughs> we're not opinion, trying to say we know. We don't know anything. Fact. We're t- two idiots live in the desert uh, like a bunch of idiots. And but we're uh, even us discussing it in front of our fan group, however big or small it is, perpetuates the echo chamber of yeah. we don't know anything so we're just going to make up our make own up, thing yep. and this was an example with Bob Iger at least trying to get ahead of some stuff yep. and so I thought that was I thought that was useful um, thanks for the show good night uh, <laughs> we've been having this conversation for like three hours <laughs> <laughs> um, it came out that they are going to do they are actually going to do the Birds of Prey movie. Now, I know Margot Robbie is producing on this. She has been the main push behind of it the whole way, so we're going to get uh, uh, we're going to get Poison Ivy and, and I'll believe Catwoman it when I see pictures all. from the set like Joker. <laughs> uh, they have a date. That doesn't mean anything. Um, which will be something else Which there. will be the weekend before uh, Bond, which will be February 7th to 2020. Kay. We have a director, it's Kathy Yang, who really has done some shorts, but nothing like super... Dead pigs. Yeah, I I, I, I don't know anything about it, and All I right. just love the title, so now I'm intrigued. <laughs> but the, the lady who wrote the Bumblebee movie is writing this. Oh, okay. So it's all-girl cast, a girl director... Uh, let, me be, let me be better about that. All-woman cast, female director, female writer... They're making a point of starting. They're they're starting in 2019, early 2019. So I'm thinking January, February to start production. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure they're not going to put like 150 million dollars into this movie. I'm thinking like 60 million dollars in this movie. So, I, and uh, the chick who played Ramona from Scott Pilgrim is in discussion to be on the cast. So, uh, we're totally be 100 percent behind that. We've talked about it on this show and tonight about how we're not really sure what DC's doing and that we won't take anything seriously until we see uh, uh, Joaquin Phoenix running around with Joker make on, <laughs> on the set. Oh my God. The, 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 so, the stuff that came out with that this week is Riley, just Riley, been... I think, today said, and this was perfect. I was like, oh my God. He is a mix between the Cesar Romero Joker and... And the um, Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like a. It's you took the two of them and smushed it's, them he together. He looks. He's dressed like the Caesar Romero one, but he's kind of crazy like Heath Ledger. Yeah, yeah. And and I we they we talked about it on last week's show. They had the first still, the first still that Todd Phillips had shown of um, Arthur Fleck, played by Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah. And kind of frumpy and whatever. Yeah. And then as the the next couple of days went along, we got more and more and more. Yeah. And then we got this screen test of him standing there and then playing this song or monologue or whatever. And they kept th- throwing, like, shots over his face of yeah. different makeup and like that. And then he's standing there in the makeup. And then and the it's next, all kind of like, wah! Yeah, it's, crazy. it's <laughs> awesome. And then the next day, we get... Um, from the set a yeah. filming shot of him running off of a subway car with everybody else around him with Joker clown masks on and stuff yeah. like that and him kind of strolling with this like I know all this shit and I'm fucking it up you know kind of <laughs> like, I'm like okay fuck, I'm in oh my god so this is an example of um, uh, some good marketing and I don't know who necessarily is responsible. If it's Todd Phillips, is, the director, has been the one who's been pushing a lot of this out. Okay. Um, you know, this is because there's been a lot of question. Like, I didn't, until we started seeing some stuff, I had no idea they were to this point. Right. I thought we were still just throwing shit at the wall and seeing right. what stuck. Right. So, um, if they can make it through filming without 
firing a director right, or walking right. Phoenix walking off the set or whatever. Um, and this is supposed to be outside of the worlds of DC universe. Right. And that's so it's a standalone. So DC's fine. not going to come in and fuck with it. And Warner Brothers is going to come in and fuck with it. They're just going to let them do their thing. Hopefully. So and the other thing too is Zazzy Beats. Um, it, they, I saw some photos of her on set. She's in the movie. Oh, nice. So you go from playing Domino to the Joker's girlfriend. <laughs> okay. It's, uh, just get paid, sweetheart. Just get paid. <laughs> oh, I'll, yeah. I am not even mad. Uh, the last thing we're going to talk about is something that is coming from 20th Century Fox. Now, I, I'm, I kind of feel that this is something that they're just trying to put in production uh, before the sell is official the first of the year. They are going to actually do Kingsman 3. Now, it makes complete sense. The first one did really, really well. The second one did really well. Uh, maybe not critically on the second one. I, I I still love it. I think it's awesome. Thinking but, about it, uh, just because we just watched um, uh, Cinema Wins did. Did, did yes, did Golden Circle. King, yeah. Well, King, we watched Kingsman yeah, 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 and then yeah. Golden Circle. Um, I think what ruined Golden Circle for me was the... Um, the promotion because they showed too much. That's fair. And so then when you went to the movie, you're like, well, I knew that Harry was alive because they show him yeah, with the, the eye patch in the trailer. Yeah. So spoilers uh, for a year old movie. And it was in the trailer. I mean, right. Right. I, I, that You know what? That, that could be, I, I could get behind that. I, I, that makes sense that we've actually talked about how, uh, some studios lately have done a really good job of showing us stuff in the trailer that never actually was in the movie. Yeah. And I think that was one of the movies where they showed everything from the movie and yeah. we kind of knew what was going on when we, when we yeah. walked and in. And I think when we were watching the trailers and stuff, I was like, I think I've seen too much. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, they um, have an official date of November 8th of 2019 for this to be released. That's a year and a month, a month and a half. Yeah. So that means that they have they are ready to go. It yeah. means they are going to start filming like now. And yeah. Matthew Vaughn is is supposed to uh, is writing it and directing it. Now I'm assuming that I've heard that he had th a three movie arc in his head the whole time, but so, he didn't do Golden Circle, right? I don't think so. So uh, talk amongst yourselves while I pull up <laughs> Kingsman. Um, but yeah. He, King's man. There we go. A golden <laughs> circle. Um, but the fact that he is ready to go with something. Uh, yeah, he directed, he wrote and directed the second one too. Huh. All right. So, uh, but, okay. Uh, but I, I wonder if we're going to Asia this time. That would be awesome. For <laughs> sake. Instead of whiskey <laughs> and tequila, we get sake. sake. Maybe. That would be actually, all right. I want to see it now because that's what I want in my <laughs> we head. We could have like you know the the kind of seventies um, Chinese kung fu oh. movies. <laughs> there you go. We're writing it for you. I don't know if that's actually what's happening. Uh, no word on if anyone is coming back. Colin Fur Taggart right. and Taggart Taggart Eggert, Taggart Eggert, and you need a better name, kid. Uh, Mark or, Strong. Well. If he comes back and is not in bags, I'm going to have an issue. Well, they Colin don't... Firth, at least, the way they explained no, it, it didn't make sense at all. In that no. universe, there's a dude with a freaking robot arm. But that happens now, today, like in real life. That worked on its own and plugged itself in and did all the uh, stuff. And then it's got just the put get over the, here fist. They put all and, the parts uh, in the gel. And the... <laughs> The same gel they put in I'm his told. eye, they put all his parts. They cloned him. It's his twin. If they do twin now, if they do twins, they do twins, and he has an English accent and does um, Oklahoma or uh, West Virginia in a in a in an American accent <laughs> at the end instead of the, the Scottish broke, and it, we're going way off the. Anyways, this was I, well, the reason I put it in here is because they have a date set on the calendar, ready to go. That means they're starting production like ASAP, but it's also one of the last things that 20th Century Fox is going to do on its own. Yeah. Or at least get it started yeah. and force it into production before it happens. Now, I know they've been trying to do this with a bunch of other things. It makes me wonder if they 
felt or know that Disney won't. And, and they feel strongly about... I, I this Kingsman is one of the ones, not because of its subject matter. I think it's one of those properties they feel is not worth the investment. Mm, maybe. I think that's more of what it is than what actually well, the subject and, matter is. Okay, besides the crassness of some of the jokes, um, they it has a... Um, a message right the first one was about um pollution or um overpopulation over yeah overpopulation, overpopulation that's right yeah. <clears throat> and then this one was about you know recreational recreational drugs, drugs and why is everything illegal so uh, they probably it's probably a political stand that disney's you know yeah not no that makes complete sense <laughs> um we're getting into the lore of Kingsman, and uh, and that's kind of weird because I started reading the comics, and the comics existed before the movies, and now they're like directly connected. They it looks like XZ from uh, XZ <laughs> from the from the movie. Like it's it's yeah. it, and they're actually pretty good, and they're just as crash as the movies are. So it's like <laughs> uh, so that's this week's episode. What did you think of the Bob Iger interview from THR? Let us know in the comments and everything else that's going on. We are doing all kinds of stuff, uploading all kinds of things. So what we'd ask is that you subscribe to the channel. I was going to do this at the beginning, and I totally forgot because because uh, notes sucked. Uh, so please, you've been here this long, subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications. We're uploading stuff almost every day. At least that's the plan. You can also get a hold of us on our social media network. We're at pop underscore cult on Twitter. We're at pop culture cult on Facebook. And we're at pop underscore. <laughs> culture cult one on instagram links are in the description <laughs> you did it all backwards i did it backwards <laughs> there's like if you go to our page there's a little banner up there all the little buttons are up there just <laughs> click on those and subscribe and like and follow and do all that yeah. stuff and share with your friends because we want more friends <laughs> till the next time good night now